Darwin had a real problem with peacocks. In fact, he once said, the sight of a peacock makes me sick, because he really didn't understand how it could evolve. An extreme reaction, perhaps. But it is hard to see a peacock's tail as something other than an impediment to his survival. They're heavy. <laughs> um, they're difficult to carry around. They take a lot of energy to grow. Uh, they're conspicuous. And basically, they're going to slow an animal down if it's running away from a predator. It took him several decades to think of it, but eventually he happened upon the idea of sexual selection, which is really Darwin's most ingenious idea, I think. These ornaments are not for our good. They're to advertise each individual's fitness, its goodness as a mate to the opposite sex of its own species. In a sexually reproducing species, survival is no good if you don't find a mate. If you don't convince somebody that you're good enough to copulate with, to have offspring with, your genes will die with you. You won't leave any descendants. Darwin saw two strategies at work in the courtship idiosyncrasies of different species. For males, it's competition. For females, it's choice. You would expect that the female who invests more per egg, per offspring, should be much more choosy about who she has offspring with, who she combines her genes with. Whereas the male, who's investing so little, you would expect that he wouldn't care so much. Darwin's contemporaries had no trouble with male competition. But females actively directing evolution through their choice of mates? That was too much. So radical was the idea of female choice that it was more than a century before anyone tested it. Marion Petrie's experiments with peacocks were among the first. According to sexual selection theory, peacocks grow their tails because peahens pay attention to them. And peahens pay attention because only a healthy, fit, strong peacock can afford to grow one. To test that, Petrie measured the tail lengths of a captive population of peacocks. Then she charted exactly which males the females chose over an entire mating season. Her data left little doubt. To peahens, size matters. Next, Petrie tried reducing the number of eye spots in some otherwise well-endowed tails. The result was a lonely mating season for the trimmed birds. Finally, Petrie started playing matchmaker. We paired females with males with big trains, and we paired females with males with small trains. And then we looked at how being paired to a male with a big train, what effect that had on the performance of, of um, the female's offspring. And what we found was is that if you were mated to a male with a, an elaborate train, your offspring survived a lot better. Um, paternity does matter. Peacocks are a classic case of evolution operating through sexual selection. Males compete for the opportunity to mate, and females hold out for the best genes. 